Welcome to the Best Practices Podcast, writing intentional teaching plans for preschoolers using the GELDs. Let's start out by talking about why lesson plans are an important tool for teachers to use. Imagine going on a trip without having any idea where you were going or how you would get there and you don't have a map to help you find your way. That's similar to going into a classroom without a lesson plan. A lesson plan gives you structure to standards you are trying to teach and the learning activities you implement each day. It's the difference between having a map for planning a trip and just trying to figure out where you're going using the road signs. Having a lesson plan to follow not only helps you be more intentional in your teaching, it keeps you more organized and helps with managing the children. Let's take a look at the process. Georgia has revised the early learning and development standards for birth through age five. They're available online at www.gelds.decal.ga.gov. Here's a quick overview of the GELDs. There are five color-coded domains, physical development and motor skills, social and emotional development, approaches to play and learning, communication, language and literacy, and cognitive development. Let's take a look at the GELDS website. Notice that if you click on the cognitive development domain, you'll see the subdomains of math, science, social studies, creative development, and cognitive processes. When you click on a domain such as here, social and emotional development, you see the strands, standards, and indicators that you can filter by age. You plan lessons using the indicators. Here's an example. This standard is labeled SED5. The child will develop relationships and social skills with peers. SED 5.3b means it is in the social and emotional development domain. It is the fifth standard for the 36 through 48 month old age range and the second indicator, indicator B. Each indicator has a rationale that gives you a clearer understanding of what the indicator means you are teaching children. It also gives you examples of the child exhibiting that skill. This is a good place to get ideas for activities or materials to use. This information is available in the GELDS Resource Guide, another tool to help you plan your activities. Let's take a look at a strand from birth through age four to get an idea of the developmental progression of the GELDS. In the Cognitive Development domain and the subdomain Math, there's a strand about measurement and comparison. One of the standards, MA4, is about patterns. As development occurs, the GELDS indicators reflect the age and skills of the growing child. For this standard, an infant will begin to imitate simple sounds and movements. A one-year-old might be able to differentiate between two objects with different characteristics with adult guidance. A two-year-old will begin to match objects with similar attributes or characteristics. A three-year-old will sort objects by one attribute such as color, shape, or size. And later in the year, as some children turn four, they might be able to sort and classify objects using one or more attributes or relationships. Becoming familiar with the GELDs will help you as you observe your children to see where their strengths and needs are. You can then decide what GELDs indicators you need to teach and plan your lessons. When you sit down to plan with certain GELDs in mind, you might be thinking about an overall topic or theme, such as things that go, farm animals, or the five senses. Or you might make a plan around a particular school event or upcoming holiday. Other teachers use their children's interests in their plans. Be sure that you are intentional in what you are teaching. The indicators reflect what we need to teach, not what the children already know how to do. For the examples in this podcast, we'll use a lesson plan template that you can find on the GELS website under Resources. There are many templates you may use to plan lessons. It may depend on the age you teach, 
your center policy or curriculum. Template 4 works well with a preschool classroom because it lays out the day from morning to evening, ensuring that you plan for the different domains throughout the day. Let's go through a weekly plan and look at the different areas to see how you would plan activities. Note that what we will talk about, the schedule and timing of the day, are suggestions and for reference only. Depending on your center's hours of operation, enrollment, and personnel, your day will look different. The examples in this podcast are to give you an idea of how to intentionally plan for preschoolers using the GELs. We'll start with arrival and breakfast. Choose materials such as puzzles, lacing cards, and pegboards that children can play with independently until breakfast begins. Most activities throughout the day need a transition to the next activity your child will do. Write these transitions on your plans. On this plan, there are different kinds of movements the children will do with music as they transition from the breakfast table to the large rug. For example, on Monday, they'll march to the rug. On Tuesday, they will hop. SED 4.3a shows signs of security and trust when separated from familiar adults. APL 1.3b. With adult support, three-year-olds begin to make simple choices. These activities foster their growth toward independence. As your class moves on to morning meeting, you want to plan to come together and settle in for the day as a group. This is a short time to say hello to everyone and do some quick activities together that will help set the tone for the day. Choose a morning song from the Song Cube. And because you're talking about the five senses this week, you might want to sing the song in some different ways, such as with your eyes closed or extra loud and extra soft. Depending on how you assign jobs in your classroom, morning meeting is a good time to go over who is doing what for the day or week. Mondays might be a little different as children haven't seen you or each other over the weekend. Give the children the opportunity to tell the child sitting next to him one thing he did this past weekend. Ask two students to share with the whole group afterwards. The remainder of the week you could do a clapping and rhythm activity where they listen to your clapping and repeat the pattern. Gels on your plan for the morning meeting would be CLL 1.3a listens and responds to conversation and group discussions. MA 4.2c recognizes simple patterns in the environment. SED 3.3d manages transitions and adapts to changes in schedules and routines with adult support. Note that the math patterning gels is a two-year-old indicator. Depending on the needs of your children, it is appropriate to list a younger or older GELS indicator on your plan. The transition to exploration, play, and centers should be an easy one for morning meeting. You might tell the group what is open and then call students' names to get up and select what they would like to do as you are clapping the rhythm activity. On this plan, we have listed activities that you would repeat throughout the week. To go with the theme, you might set up your dramatic play area to look like a grocery store. The children might also have the option to use the sensory table, build with different types of blocks like foam, cardboard, or even sponges from the dollar store. Use Play-Doh, make a collage, or listen to an audio book. Repeat these activities so that the children have the opportunity to explore all of them over the course of the week. The gels for exploration, play, and centers would be APL 3.3a engages in an activity for sustained periods of time to achieve a goal. CP 3.3b tests different possibilities to determine the best solution to a problem. SED 5.2b plays alongside other children for short periods, observes and imitates other children. 
CR2.3 A uses a variety of tools and art media to express individual creativity. Approaches to play and learning, cognitive processes, and social and emotional development gels are good to use for this time of day. You will be able to observe the children in your class during this time as they initiate activities and work through ideas and challenges. This assessment information will help you plan for the individual needs for each child. For this time in the day, you also need to plan for cleanup time. The last 10 minutes of the exploration, play, and centers can be the cleanup song as the children transition to the snack tables. Your snack helpers can be helping you while the other children clean up the areas where they were playing. The five senses theme is easy to incorporate into meal times as you can have a variety of foods out to explore and taste. On this lesson plan, we have listed something different every day. Monday, the children will taste and talk to you and their friends about bananas. Tuesday, they'll try apples of different colors and so on. Note that each day you are starting conversations about what the children are eating and asking them to describe what they taste. Did you like that green grape? You made a face like it was sour. Was it sour? The language you use will give them new vocabulary to express their own ideas and feelings. The gels you will have listed on your plans are PDM4.3A, uses senses purposefully to learn about objects, and CLL4.3C describes activities and experiences using details. As you clean up snack and get ready for outside, you might plan for the children to use the restroom. Planning for games, such as Simon Says or singing songs, will make the wait more manageable. Planning for outside time is important. Physical development and health are always appropriate gels to use when thinking about outdoor activities, but also consider the other domains you can include. For the five senses theme, encourage children to explore water or mud. Collect things in nature that have different smells or things to explore such as rocks or leaves. Create leaf rubbings and talk to children about what they hear outside. GELD's PDM5.3B demonstrates coordination and balance. SC2.2A explores and investigates the properties of water. And SC1.3A uses senses to observe and experience objects and environment would be listed on your plans. Depending on your facility and weather, you might also want to plan for inside gross motor activities. You might have riding toys available in the hallway. Bean bags and soft balls are another good alternative to outside play, or mats for rolling if you have the space. Coming in from outside after the children have moved and expended some energy is a good time for focused learning. Small group time is teacher directed. The attention span of a typically developing three-year-old is short, so plan on activities that are rich, but also relatively brief. Be sure to provide some independent activities for children to do as they finish. Again, this time will look different depending on the number of teachers in your classroom. In this plan, we have listed one small group activity for each day. Add other activities if you have another teacher in your room. On Monday, the teacher will encourage the children to write using shaving cream. This falls under the GELS CLL 9.2B, Experiments with a Variety of Writing Tools, Materials, and Surfaces. On Tuesday, the teacher will help children identify foods as sometimes, treats, or always, nutritious. This is PDM 2.3b, distinguishes healthy food choices from less healthy food choices. On Wednesday, the children will sort foods into groups based on color or shape, which is MA4.2b. 
matches objects with similar attributes or characteristics. On Thursday, the teacher will provide textured paint for children to explore which falls under CR2.3A, uses a variety of tools and art media to express individual creativity. Lastly, on Friday, the children will play sound bingo. This helps develop the GELD's indicator CLL6.3A, listens and matches rhythm, volume, and pitch of rhymes, songs, and chants. Meals and snacks are a good time to focus on routines and communication. In this plan, we list conversation starters, intentional topics to bring up while everyone is eating. What is your favorite food to eat? When planning for mealtimes, these two GELDS indicators are both appropriate. CLL2.4A demonstrates understanding of more complex vocabulary through everyday conversations. CLL4.3D uses expanded vocabulary in a variety of situations. An easy transition as children are finishing eating and putting away their lunch is to play music for them to go and sit on the group rug. Reading and telling stories helps children become familiar with words, language, stories, and the value of books. This all builds a child's early literacy skills, helping him to go on to read successfully later in life. Plan specifically which books you will read each week so you can have them on hand. Always make sure you're familiar with the book ahead of time to make sure it's appropriate for your children. These books go along with the five senses theme. As you read and discuss the books with the large group, these gels are appropriate for your plan. CLL 5.3C answers questions about a story. CLL 5.4D makes real-world connections between stories and real-life experiences. Storytime is always a good activity to have before rest time as young children settle into an afternoon nap. You can start the rest time music you have selected while getting out mats and favorite blankets or stuffed animals. Playing music or letting children listen to audiobooks during rest time helps them with this daily routine. As the children awake from rest time, you might have a few students help put away mats and some help with afternoon snack preparation. A social studies indicator that you can list for this time is SS4.3A completes jobs to contribute to her community. After the afternoon snack, you will be repeating many of the same activities your class did in the morning. This repetition is good to reinforce concepts and provide for deeper understanding. During the afternoon meeting, you can talk about the objects that were collected while the students were outside. GELD's SC1.3A uses senses to observe and experience objects and environment would be listed on your plan. As a transition to afternoon exploration, play, and centers, you can plan for a music with movement activity, such as those listed here. This would cover GELD's CR3.3A, participates in classroom activities with musical instruments and singing to express creativity. Exploration, play, and centers for the afternoon are mostly the same with the addition of Duplos and Mr. Potato Head to add some variety. Children will be able to select different activities or continue play from the morning. We added PDM 4.3b, takes things apart and attempts to put them back together. When you take the children outside in the afternoon, bringing a different activity such as music for dancing will add variety to the day. In addition to the Physical Development and Motor Skills Indicator, PDM 5.3b demonstrates coordination and balance. You would also list CR1.4a 
uses dance to express thoughts, feelings, and energy, uses dance as an outlet for creativity. Just as you open the day with puzzles and manipulatives, it's also a good way to end the day as children are waiting for pickup. To keep this time interesting, make sure you rotate a variety of choices throughout the week. You may need to plan specific activities to meet a particular child's needs. Make special notes in the adaptation section of the lesson plan along with the corresponding gels. On this plan, an appropriate adaptation would be for a child who has sensory integration issues. Putting the shaving cream or the texture paint in a plastic bag allows for exploration without having to actually touch the substances. Because that child is still learning through her senses, this gels is appropriate for the adaptation. PDM 4.3a uses senses purposefully to learn about objects. Finally, at the bottom of the lesson plan template, there are boxes to check to see which gels you have covered this week. This box lets you quickly see at a glance the domains you have planned with, ensuring that your activities address the interests and needs of each student. After carefully planning with the gels for your week, you will have a road map for where you want to go with your students. Before we end, let's look at some common questions teachers have. Do I teach all of the indicators to every child every year? No. In a typical preschool classroom, you may have children that are quite young, but you may have some that are approaching their fourth birthday. Use the indicators that are appropriate for each child. You may use two-year-old, three-year-old, or even pre-K indicators with activities to meet the needs of the children. Remember the example from the beginning of the podcast that shows the developmental progression of the gels? Use the indicators that are appropriate for each child. How do I assess preschoolers to understand what I need to teach them? The best way to assess children is through observation. Watch and listen to what they are able to do. If a child is having a hard time with transitions, you know you need to help that child by using songs or having their favorite materials such as the plastic animals available when they arrive in your classroom each morning. If a child is not verbally communicating yet, you may plan to look at lots of books so you can point at pictures and say the words. Is it okay to repeat activities the next week? Children need repetition and practice to learn concepts. For example, puzzles. A preschooler may be able to easily complete a simple puzzle but struggles with a new, more challenging one. But while repetition is good, it can also get boring. There are often multiple ways to teach skills, so be sure to rotate your materials on shelves. Add some novelty by bringing in some new things. Collect recycled materials to create activities for toddlers. An oatmeal box becomes a fun container to place things in and out of, or a large empty box turned on its side can invite exploration or become a cozy place to read. Do I actually teach social and emotional development and approaches to play? Absolutely. These areas provide a foundation for helping children learn to communicate when they are frustrated. For example, you might verbalize emotions you see children expressing while playing by saying, You are sad because you want to hold that book. Let's see if we can find another one for you to read. This not only helps with identifying feelings, but also with language development. How can I help parents know what's appropriate to teach their children at each age? Share the GELD's website with parents. It's a great resource so they can see the things that you are working on in the classroom and they can do follow-up activities at home. We hope some of these ideas and strategies will help you plan using the gels. Remember, every class is different and you should plan based on the needs of your children. If you have questions about the gels, email gels at decal.ga.gov.